All right. Well, thank you all for being here. We very much appreciate it. Uh, I'm State Representative John Patrick Carney, and uh, we're going to be talking today a little bit about money that's been siphoned off from our uh, A-rated public school systems across the state and unfortunately given to some very poorly performing charter schools. Uh, as you may or may not know, in the last budget alone, almost a half billion dollars, billion with a B, was siphoned off from A-rated public schools and given to failing charter schools here in the state. In fact, the Fordham Institute, which supports charter schools, has called Ohio the poster child of what not to do for charter schools. And for the record, certainly we support good schools. I certainly support good public schools, good charter schools, good private schools. What's most disconcerting right now in the state of Ohio is that it seems that those who are spending money on political contributions and running very, very bad charter schools are getting a disproportionate amount of the money from your tax dollars. And certainly the people here locally, when they were supporting their local school system, weren't voting to have their money siphoned off and given to the worst charter schools in the community. Here in the Reading Community School District, total state aid of $3.5 million for 1,400 students it re it's received A's and B's on their state report cards. It's lost literally hundreds of thousands of dollars to per per poorer performing charter schools. 9% of the total state aid is lost to pay for a mere 3% of students to receive a worse education. And while we hear oftentimes uh, from Republican incumbents about how students should be able to put their money in their backpack and take it wherever they want, uh, I'm certain that the folks locally here did not realize that 3% of the students who left their school district are taking 9% of their state aid. Uh, as a result, Reading receives $163 less per student who stays here in the school district. Uh, Ohio's third largest public school district, that being Cincinnati Public Schools, is now number four in losing money to poorer performing charter schools. It's lost $48 million or the equivalent of 30% of its state aid to poor performing charter schools. Uh, our candidate for state representative in, uh, in House District 28, Micah Cameras, represents a district that's lost $5.6 million to charter schools. And in 2012 and 2013 school years, 2.8 million of that was schools receiving Ds and Fs. Uh, unfortunately, the American dream we know goes through great performing schools. And as the folks in the legislature and the governor and many other Republicans continue to take money from David Brennan and Bill Lauger, who are merely trying to bankroll their institutions of charter schools that are doing a poor job to put money in their pocket, our young people here in the state are losing out on their educational opportunity and their chance at an American dream. Uh, having said all that, I'd like to turn it over to our candidate for the Attorney General, David Pepper. Thanks, everybody. It's great to be here today. This is one of our great Hamilton County schools, so we're, we're glad you're here to visit. Red Redding has a long history. It's a great school district. It's a great community. Um, you know, it, it, John summed up very well. You know, we're not here to say that every charter school out there is a problem, but unfortunately, the way they wrote this law, uh, far, far too many are. And something's wrong. And Bill Clinton said this at the, at the dinner a few months ago. Something's wrong when dollars, public dollars, are leaving a-rated school districts uh, to flow into schools that are ranked F. Just something's plain wrong there. It's even worse that people don't even know it. That people are making decisions uh, for their kids, trying to do the best they can, and they are unknowingly taking children from an A-rated district, but, but on the strength of a fancy brochure or a billboard, choosing to move their child with all the best intentions, but unknowingly to a school that is ranked D or F. Now, they may figure it out later on that that was a bad decision, uh, but that decision may be one that costs them several years of that child's education and, and maybe the, ultimately their, their entire education. And so we need a system that works far better for systems and cities like Reading and most importantly for the parents uh, who, who have kids all throughout our state that are either directly sending their kids to schools that later on they figure out they shouldn't have sent them to, but worse, also parents in schools like Reading that haven't sent their kids to another school, but they're suffering too because they're losing the, the funds. So I, I'm here today because um, Auditor to be Carney and myself have pledged to do something about this. Uh, we, we will work together on this issue as Attorney General and Auditor to bring far more transparency to this issue. 
uh, to bring far more accountability to this issue, uh, to get as many of the funds back. You know, one of the things that's happening around the state right now, and we've seen it here in Greater Cincinnati, a whole lot of these schools are now failing completely, meaning they're going under. Uh, there are there are closed, there are shuttered schoolhouses around the state of charter schools that, that have failed. And in addition to failing those kids, it's also in the end failing the taxpayers. $31 million is missing all over the state from charter schools and charter school operators that have failed. And the Attorney General has at this point only collected 500000 of those $31 million that are missing. My view, and we'll work together on this, and I propose creating something called the Taxpayer Protection Unit. And we will use that unit to do everything we can to find all 31 million of those lost dollars. And I'm sure the numbers are just climbing, by the way. That's a number that's a few months old. And take every one of those 31 million dollars and drive it back into schools like Reading that are succeeding. Uh, we can't afford already the system, but we certainly can't afford to have these millions of dollars disappear every time a charter school fails. And I'm here to tell you the current Attorney General has done nothing on this issue. In fact, he's done worse than nothing. There's a current lawsuit at the Supreme Court of Ohio between uh, David Brennan and some of the charter schools that are tired of being bullied by this by the White Hat management. And David Brennan is literally arguing in court that even when his school fails, his company, the charter school operating company, should still get to keep all the assets and the equipment. That's why we can't find the $31 million. They want to still keep it. And Mike DeWine has not done anything in that case to protect the public interest in all those public assets. Uh, so he's doing the opposite of cracking down on this stuff. He's actually letting it go. And it goes back to what John said. We have people who've taken a lot of money from people who are getting rich off this broken system. And we need to do all we can to bring some common sense and accountability back to this system and to make it work for communities like Reading. So that's, that's what I have to add. I look very much forward to working with John when we get there to really crack down on what is, what is absolute waste, fraud, abuse, and the victims of this waste, waste, fraud, and abuse are not only the kids in the charter schools, but also the kids at very good schools like Reading that are losing dollars to these other schools. So I don't know, Michael, were you going to say a few words? Let me introduce to you the next state rep uh, for Reading and the rest of this area, a great candidate, Micah Cameron. Thanks so much, David, John, and Denise for being here at one of the excellent schools in the 28th district. Uh, I'm running for state representative because because I had one of the best educations you could get from kindergarten through law school. I went to top public schools here in the state of Ohio, and I want to make sure that every student has that opportunity to go to a great school. Uh, Reading is a great school here in our community, and there are a number of them in the 28th district. Providing a good education is one of the only constitutional requirements of the state legislature, and it's something that the state legislature has been uh, falling down on its responsibility to the people lately. It's going to be a top priority of mine to make sure that every day we're prioritizing uh, funding a thorough and efficient education for the students of this district and of the state of Ohio. I'll work tirelessly with folks like Representative Driehaus, our next auditor and attorney general, and also across the aisle to make sure that we're, we're providing every kid with the opportunity to go to a great school and to succeed and to fulfill their own dream for themselves and for their family. Um, it, it's not fair to the communities like this that $5.6 million have been taken from schools in the 28th district from good schools and given to schools that are failing. We need to make sure that every student has the ability to succeed and prioritizing education in the legislature will be my way of doing that. So thank you all and I want to introduce Representative Denise Driehaus who's been one of the education leaders here in our state and also whose district uh, is just down the road. Thank you. Yeah. I was going to mention that. So we are just north of the 31st House District, uh, which is where I am uh, the state representative. But just two, two things quickly, uh, and, and everyone talked about this, the, the lack of accountability for charter schools is um, a matter of policy and something that I believe the legislature has not done well. Uh, I don't know if you know that a charter school can open up and fail for five years before we take any kind of action against that charter school. And that is simply too long to allow a school to fail the kids that are trying to get an education in that school. And so, you know, when, when you think about that, well, what, what does it really mean? Because so, we've been talking about kind of high level policy, which is where we live, which is where we have impacts. But what does it mean on the ground when you've got charter schools in a neighborhood that fail year in and year out? And uh, I will tell you, uh, in my first couple years as a state rep a, a number of years ago, I visited every single school 
in my district, all the public schools, all the chartered non-public schools and the charters. And when I offered the question to the public schools and the chartered non-public, say, to the principals, what does it mean for you to have a, a failing charter school or just any charter school in the vicinity of the school that you're running right here? Without exception, the answer was, it's bad. It's a bad scenario because what happens is that these kids are peeled off because of good marketing strategies, put on billboards, they put flyers on the cars in the parking lot of the school, and they peel kids away from very good public schools or charter non-publics. The kid goes to the charter school, the expectation is that they'll get a higher level of education. They do not, without exception, they do not. They eventually make their way back to the school of origin, and then that school is in a position to bring that kid back up to speed. Because it's been a year or two years you know, until that kid comes back. It's expensive and it's really, really bad for the kids. And so that is on the ground what happens when we have these failing charter schools. And I've got the statistics and, and they've already been printed uh, in the Enquirer about, about how bad they really are. And it's staggering to look at the OGT success or really not success of these charter schools compared to the public schools and the charter non-publics. But if there's real impact on the ground and we don't have the, when you've got a young kid in school, we don't have that kind of time to mess around with the kid's education. Uh, we're learning more about early childhood. We're learning more about investing at the early end of the education spectrum. When you pull a kid out in first, second, or third grade, and that kid spends two years in a failing charter school, there's a huge impact there. And, and we can't afford it. In the state of Ohio, we can't afford it. And so as policymakers, we need to say to ourselves, where are the policy directives that we need to implement to stop this from happening? Because the parents really do, all parents are looking out for the good of their kids. They don't know that the charter school is, is a failing charter school. They just see a glossy brochure and it looks good. Um, and so it's a real disservice to the citizens to not have good policies in place. And so that's why we're here today. I'm looking forward to working uh, with all three of these gentlemen uh, in the future on this issue because it's one of the most important issues to the state of Ohio. Because if we can't tackle education and create a good opportunity for all the kids in Ohio, we have failed our duties. Uh, so I leave you with that and, um, and we all stand ready to answer any questions that you have. You look like you're security you know. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah. What specifically do you plan to, do you have any ideas for, for legislation that you plan to propose that would help hold charter schools more accountable or is it just a matter of what, to educate parents that these charter schools are bad or what is the game? Well, well arguably there's laws already on the books uh, that enable the auditor, the attorney general to go after some of these organizations. I mean at the end of the day, uh, tax dollars are the taxpayers, not the members of the General Assembly or the governor or anybody else who's in public office, they are stewards of those assets. And unfortunately, what we've seen is uh, that our constitutional office holders, our legislature, have not just gone to try to provide the sorts of transparency to parents and community members with respect to where their money's going and what sort of achievement the, the young people in their community are, are getting in those schools. I mean, certainly when you have a group like the Fordham Institute that is supporting charter schools nationally, coming in and saying, Ohio, you're the poster child of what not to do, even advocates of charter schools are saying, you're doing it the wrong way. And frankly, uh, the auditor is the chief inspector of the state. It's the obligation of whoever the auditor is to track every public dime that's being spent. And right now that's just not happening. And in fact, we know that one of the largest charter school operators in the state, White Hat Management, David Brennan, gave two and a half million dollars in campaign contributions, got over a billion dollars in tax money. And to David's point, essentially at the beginning of the year is taking public dollars and purchasing things for the classroom. And when it gets to the end of the year saying, this is private property, we own the books, we own the, the uh, desktop computers or laptop computers or whatever assets are in the classroom. Now, if any school teacher here in the Reading School walked out at the end of the year and said, well, all the computers are mine in my classroom or all the books in the classroom are mine, we'd say, well, that's a crime. You've just stolen from the school district. Certainly, it would seem that it's the exact same crime if it's happening in charter schools. And unfortunately, it looks like campaign contributions are influencing the folks in the legislature who aren't doing enough. Now, we have introduced additional ideas in the legislature to provide greater transparency and accountability for these schools. But arguably speaking, if you had David Pepper as Attorney General and myself as Auditor, uh, you already have the authority to go after some of these schools and frankly get the state taxpayer money back 
uh, where we're not spending that money wisely and frankly where it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing for the taxpayers. Yeah. And let me add on that, and I do think, I'm sure there's a, a whole treasure trove of um, legislative changes that, that need to be made. Uh, we, we literally are, I think, infamous in the country uh, for such a terrible system, and it started with very bad law to begin with, written by the folks who are doing so well from the system. Uh, but as Attorney General, there there's work you could do right now. The Attorney General is, is the job working with the auditor that's supposed to collect, you know, unpaid or lost dollars. Uh, so there's nothing holding back the Attorney General right now from going after that, th those millions that are missing. Uh, this is also the job that's supposed to crack down on waste, fraud, and abuse. That could be happening right now. And I mentioned this case, I mean, the most glaring example, we have a case at the Supreme Court of Ohio right now uh, between charter schools that are frankly demanding the, 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 to their credit, saying that the Brennan Group is bullying them basically and doing this kind of shenanigans where they want to take all the public property, deem it private. The Attorney General, uh, his office a few years ago was in court arguing that everything Brennan was saying was not consistent with Ohio law, the charter school law. But now this is the Supreme Court, the Attorney General has gotten out of the case. So the Attorney General is not even doing the basic job of representing the Department of Education, the public interest of Ohio, to demand the most simple thing, which is, no, when, when a charter school fails, the assets are actually still the public's. So we get to get that those dollars back and put it back to public use. So these guys just I mean, forget that they, they might say, well, we need legal changes. The auditor and the attorney general right now could be doing a ton of work just doing their jobs, enforcing the law, going after lost dollars today to deal with this problem. They just don't do it because the people they'd be going after are among their biggest donors. It's, a, you know, it's just a matter of leadership. Mentioned campaign contributions. Um, is it fair to say that none of you guys are going to be accepting campaign contributions from Brennan and others in that position? I think it's probably fair to say we will neither be offered. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, we'll offer him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you all for being here. Thanks so much. It's a pleasure.